hello guys welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel in today's video we are going to be looking at the topic recursive sequences as you can see the video is named part one so we have like four different parts that we are going to do to complete this topic so for those who are not are not yet subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe and you turn on your notifications so that when part 2, part 3 and part 4 videos are going to be uploaded you are going to be notified to come and watch so let's get started alright guys so in today's video we are going to be basically looking at the generalities on recursive sequences meaning the basic things that you need to know about recursive sequences that is the way equations are being, are being set in the GCE so after this video we are going to dive straight away into solving the past GC equations and the past mock examination questions on this topic specifically alright so as you can see the very first thing we are going to be looking at is identifying sequences so we are going to see how to identify sequences and come out with your nth terms all right so for a sequence let's say vn to be geometric then the ratio between the n plus one term and the n term is equal to a constant we usually refer to this constant as the common ratio now if i characterize a sequence vn by a and arrow then we can write vn as a a arrow raised to the power n minus one provided vn is geometric now what is a a is called the first term which is gotten by by inputting the very first value of n r is a common ratio which is gotten by the difference between any two consecutive terms while capital n is the number of terms now let's see the relationship between capital n and small n i will take the first example if i have a geometric sequence where small n is beginning from 1 so the very first term of that geometric sequence is v1 the common ratio is constant is arrow then it can be written as such vn is equal to v1 arrow raised to the power n minus 1 because our capital n here is the number of terms and since we are beginning from 1 and we are ending at n there are n terms so capital n automatically becomes n for example if i begin counting from 1 right up to 10 i have 10 terms so beginning from 1 to n there are n terms now let's see a second scenario where our small n is beginning from 0 now if vn is geometry and the very first term is v0 the common ratio is arrow we can express it this way vn will be equal to v0 arrow raised to the power small n this time around our capital n is equal to small n plus 1 because there are n plus 1 terms since we are beginning from 0 it is just like you begin from 1 to n you have n terms but now you are beginning from 0 meaning you have added one term for example if i count from 0 right up to 11 or sorry from 0 to 10 i have 11 terms meaning from 0 to, to, to 10 is the same as one term plus the number of terms from 1 to 10 that's 10 plus 1 11 so basically when you are beginning from 0 the formula changes you have vn is equal to v0 r raised to the power n because replacing capital n with n plus 1 you have n plus 1 minus 1 the 1 are nulls so you get v0 r raised to the power n so that's a trick that you should you should um, always remember and not fall into the trap all right now for a sequence to be arithmetic then the difference between the n plus 1 term and the n term should also be a constant we usually refer to this constant as the common difference generally we express arithmetic sequences in this form a plus n minus 1 times d our capital n is the number of terms two d is the common difference and a is the first term so let's take it two cases if my small n is beginning from one then my v of n will be equal to v1 plus n minus 1 times d because beginning from 1 we have n terms so we just replace capital n with small n but if you are beginning from n if you are beginning from 0 then your your very first term is going to be v0 but this time around your capital n is going to be n plus 1 because there are n plus 1 terms so inputting capital n with um, by small n plus 1 we are going to have 
n plus 1 minus 1 to give us n. So finally, we have Vn is equal to V0 plus n times d. Alright, so we are going to move on to the next objective, which is on monotony of a sequence. So we are going to see how to, to show if sequences are monotonic increasing or monotonic decreasing or constant. So a sequence is monotonic if it is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. Now when is it said to be strictly increasing? To show that it is monotonic increasing, it is sufficient to show that un plus 1 minus un is greater than 0. Now, to show that a sequence vn is monotonic decreasing, it is sufficient to show that vn plus 1 minus vn is strictly less than 0. Now, to show that a sequence wn is constant, it is sufficient to show that wn plus 1 minus wn is equal to 0. Now, a constant sequence always converges. So we should note, every constant sequence always converges. And what does it converge to? It converges to any of its terms. It means that the limit of the sequence is either the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, or the nth term. Basically, since it is constant, all of these terms are the same. So, note, a constant sequence always converges. Converge means you're going towards a certain value. Converge means your limit exists. In the subsequent slides, we are going to explain more on the convergence of a sequence. Alright, so here we are going to be talking about how to prove some certain things concerning sequences and the limit of sequences as well. Alright, so to show that the sequence Vn is geometric, it is just sufficient to show that the ratio between the n plus 1 term and the n term is equal to a constant. We know this constant is called the common ratio. So in the hall, if you're asked to show that a sequence is geometric, all you need to show is that the difference, sorry, the ratio between the n plus 1 term of that sequence and its n term is a constant. Now, what if you're asked to show that it is arithmetic? If you are now asked to show that it is arithmetic, you need now to show the difference. The difference between the n plus 1 term and the n term should be equal to the constant. The constant is called the common difference. Alright, a sequence Vn converges if the limit of the sequence is 1, finite and 2, unique. So if the limit of the sequence is finite and unique, then the sequence converges. What do we mean? We mean that if the limit is equal to L and L belongs to the set of real numbers and it is unique, then it converges. Finite means it belongs to the set of real numbers and uniqueness, uniqueness means it has only one value, meaning that at n, as n tends to infinity, there is only one value of, 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 of the limit. The limit does not have two different values. A limit, the, the limit of a sequence can a sequence can have two different limits having two different limits you conclude that it diverges because it is impossible for a sequence to have two different limits so basically if they ask you to find the limit of a sequence it is the limit at infinity now if they ask you to show that a sequence converges you need to show that the, the, the limit of the sequence is a real number and that limit is unique all right if these two conditions fail, then the sequence diverges. So if the finite condition fails, it diverges. If the uniqueness condition fails, it diverges. Now let's look at the sandwich theorem. So if you consider three positive sequences Vn, Un and Wn, defined such that Wn lies between Vn and the Un. Now if the limit of Vn is equal to the limit of Un and that limit exists, meaning finite and um, and unique then we can say that the limit of wn is that limit so basically wn bounded wn is bounded by two sequences if the limit of those two sequences are the same then the limit of wn is that limit now let's note something as n tends to infinity if i have a sequence a n the sequence a n will be tending to a n plus one so it means that as n is turning to infinity, the limit of the sequence a n is called the limit of the sequence a n plus 1. A very important point to note. 
all right so we are going to end the video of today by first looking at the adjacent sequences all right so two sequences are said to be adjacent if they are defined recursively such that one is increasing and the other is decreasing Define recursively simply means that one sequence is defined in function of the other. Being increasing, we, we, we showed how a sequence is, is increasing. We, we saw the definition of a sequence being increasing. We saw the definition of a sequence being decreasing. Now, there is a property about adjacent sequences that is so peculiar. The property is that two adjacent sequences always converge to the same limit. Very important point to note. Now next we look at the telescopic series. The telescopic sum is a sum in which subsequent terms cancel each other, leaving just the initial and the final terms. I'm not going to lay more emphasis on this in this video, but in our subsequent videos as part 2, part 3 and part 4 of sequences and series, we are going to emphasize more on the telescopic series and we are going to see how useful it is. Now, the sum to infinity of a geometric progression is given by that formula V0 on 1 minus R. V0 is the first term. R is a common ratio. But this formula applies provided the series converges, meaning the absolute value of R is always less than 1. Now, next, we, we see how to find the sum of the first n terms of a GP. It's given by A into 1 minus R to the n, all divided by 1 minus R. Our capital N here is the number of terms. So, if capital N is equal to N plus 1, meaning we are beginning from 0. So, we are, when we are beginning from 0 and we are ending at N, we have N plus 1 terms. We just replace. But if you are beginning from 1 and you are ending at N, you have N terms. You replace and you are done. So, endeavor to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. Most importantly, turn on your post notifications so that when the other videos are going to be uploaded, you are going to be notified in order to come and watch. So, if you love the video, hit the like button, share the video to your friends, and invite your friends to subscribe to the channel as well.